Hi, my name is Steve James, and I'm the teacher and author of the class and book called How to Read the Bible for Understanding and Power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 349, the start of a special series I'll be doing on the audio class. The audio class will be remastered, edited, augmented from the original audio files. I originally taught the class every third Saturday of each month starting in January of 2005, a day in the Word each month until June, with a summer break finishing in September of 2005. Here is the opening of the class, part one. God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, and I'd like to welcome you to this class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. My name is Steve Jaynes, and I'm the teacher of this class, and I'm real excited to get into the greatness of God's Word, the Bible, so that you'll be able to understand it for yourself and to walk with great power in your lives. The theme first is Matthew 22:29, and I would like for you right now to take your Bibles and follow along as we go through this class. But take your Bible, go to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, and in verse 29, and we will read this verse together. And it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God come up to me and they've asked me, they'd go, Steve, he says, well, I know that you're into God's Word, I know you read the Bible a lot, but I tried to read the Bible and I just couldn't understand it. I would read it for a little while and I just couldn't understand what it was and how it applied to my life right now in this day and time. And they, and they look at this old time book, this old fogey book, and it didn't apply to them and they didn't know how to use it. Well, you know what I believe? I believe that most people would like to be able to understand the Bible, the Scriptures, the Word of God, and to know God and to have answers in their life. And that's what this class is all about, is to give you a framework and a outline or a road map as to how this Bible works and how you can walk through it as you read it and search the Scriptures and you will become very blessed as you understand God's Word. Because God's Word, the Scriptures, the Bible, is our contact point with God. As you read God's Word and you're and wanting to know about God, God is able to show you Himself through His Word. In my over 25 years of biblical studies, biblical researching of God's Word, I have come to know more and more the only place to really get to know God and to get answers is in the Bible, in the Scriptures, in the Word of God. Now you might have noticed that I use three different ways of saying the same thing. I call the Bible the Bible. Sometimes I say the Scriptures because in the Bible itself it calls, them, it calls itself the Scriptures. It also calls itself the Word of God. There are many other words that, that in God's Word that talks about God's Word. It calls it the law, the, the statues, and things like this. But the three main things that will be in this class is I will call the Bible the Bible, the Scriptures, and the Word of God. And I'll use those words interchangeably just to give you an idea and of what we're talking about. When you hear the word Bible, you know I'm talking about the Bible that's in your lap or the scriptures that's in your lap or the words of God or God's word that's in your lap. But in this verse here, Jesus Christ said, you do err, you make mistakes, you fall short, you come up empty, not having the power that you need. And that's what people have said to me. They've said, you know, I don't understand the Word of God. 
I just don't understand it. So, not understanding it, Jesus says, you err. You make mistakes. You fall short. You come up empty. You come up empty. You don't have the power when you need it. You're not able to walk the way that the Word of God says it's available for us to walk. And that's with power and confidence, knowing that God will take care of us. But that comes from being able to understand the Word of God. So in this class, we're going to learn how to understand that Bible when we read it. And we're going to learn how to get so blessed and be blessed. In this class, I'm, not, I'm going to teach you how to read the Bible so you could understand it for yourself, where you wouldn't need someone to say, well, this is what it means. But you'll be able to read it and say, aha, I see what it says. I can understand it. And as you do that, you'll be able to walk with the power of God in your life. You know, learning is an exciting adventure. That's what we're going to be doing in this class. We're going to be learning how to read our Bibles and how to manifest the, the power of God. Now, I'm not going to teach this, this Bible, the Scriptures, from Genesis through Revelation verse by verse. But by God's grace and mercy, I'm going to set before you all the basic keys in the Bible so that you'll be able to read it for yourself and have a tool or a resource that you can utilize to live a powerful life and be in fellowship with God. I will give you the signpost, the guidepost that will allow you to be able to read the Bible for yourself. This class will be like a road map or an outline through the Bible. We'll actually be going through every section of this Word of God, and I'll be pointing out, this is what God was doing at this particular time. This is what God was saying at this particular time in history. This is what God has for you right now. And as you learn this Bible and as you're able to pick it up, you will have a road map through the Bible that will bless your lives as you sit and read God's Word. But you know, when we look at this verse here in Matthew twenty-two twenty-nine, Jesus not only said, you do not know the Bible, but you do not know the power of God either. In this class, we're going to learn and know the power of God to be able to use it to help ourselves and to help others that will hear us as we share this wonderful Word of God with them. You'll be able to tap into the power source of the Most High God, who made the heavens and the earth, who raised up the dead, who healeth all our diseases. As you learn to read God's Word and to search the Scriptures for yourself, you'll be able to tap into this resource this power of God that is available for you in this day and time so that you would be able to tap into the power source of the Most High God who made the heavens and the earth, who raised up the dead, who healeth all our diseases. This class is for those who want to know, who would like to know that they know that they know, that they have that great confidence in God and in His Word and who they are and who God is. For those who would like to tap into the resources of the power of God. As we go through this class, we are going to learn to read our own Bibles, the Bibles that you have right now in your laps, and to have respect for God, to have reverence for God, and to have love for God. To be able to live a life that you have always wanted to live is available by a knowledge of God's Word. Now, to get started just a little bit further in this class, I'd like you to take your Bibles and go to John chapter 10, verse 10. And I'd like to share with you at this time also, when, when we go through the class, I'm going to say go to different places in the Bible. I would like for you to go to these different places, like earlier it was in Matthew. Now we're going to John chapter 10, verse 10. I would like for you to take your Bibles and follow along the best you can to learn how to follow along, to learn how your Bible works by 
forcing yourself or making yourself go to these places in the Bible, you'll be able to learn where these different places, where these different verses are, and what the meaning that they could have for your life. And now that we're here in John chapter 10, verse 10, I'd like to tell you a little story. 26 years ago or so, I was sitting in a, a fast food restaurant, and a stranger came up to me and asked me if he could sit down for a little while. So I invited him to sit down, and after a while, he started to show me this verse here in the Bible, John 10.10. 10. Now, at that time, I didn't know very much about the Bible. I tried. I was like everyone else. I was those people that tried to read it and did not understand it. I started reading through the Gospel of John, and I thought I liked it, but I didn't know how it applied to me. Well, this man who sat down with me at that fast food restaurant showed me this verse, and he just read it to me. And it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. And he pointed out to me that this was Jesus Christ speaking. Jesus Christ is the one that said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And he said, did Jesus Christ come? Well, I believe that he did come. I just didn't understand much about it. He said, do you believe that he came? I said, yeah, I do. He said, well, he came so that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Well, that day in that fast food restaurant, I was a young man that was struggling through life. And I didn't have the power that I needed at times. I, do, I was not living a more than abundant life. I was unemployed at the time. So this man started teaching me God's Word, started great with this verse. And he just kept pointing out to me, wouldn't you like to have an abundant life? And I said, Yes, I would. He says, that's not what the Word says. The Word says, a more abundant life. More abundant life. And I said, wow. Jesus Christ came so that I could have life and have it not just abundantly, but more abundantly. Well, this verse in the Bible changed my life as he was explaining it to me that day. It started me on a quest. It started me on an adventure that I'm still on today to learn how to tap into the, the abundant life that Jesus Christ was talking about. This started for me, well, like I said, over 26 years ago now in biblical searching of the Word, in biblical studies, and to learn how to read God's Word for myself so that I could know God and have a personal relationship with God as my Father. And later on, I got a strong desire to help others, help others like you. I spent time and graduated from a biblical research college. I went to many Bible classes and conferences. I spent time sitting under many fine Bible teachers. I even traveled across the country and even to other countries to learn more about God and His Word. I had lots of personal time just sitting, reading God's Word and studying God's Word so that I would be able to teach this class on how to read the Bible for yourself to understand it and have power. I believe that God wants you to be able to read it for yourself. I believe that you can have answers for your life and to get, know, to get to know God for yourself as you learn how to pick up this Bible and read it for yourself. You just need someone to teach you how to do it, show you the sign post, give you the road map, give you the understanding so that you could pick this Bible up for yourself and to be able to understand it. That's what this class is all about. My goal for this class is you'll be able to read this wonderful Word of God, this Bible, this Scripture for yourself, and for you, yourself, to start to live the life that Jesus Christ came to make available for you. And as you read and search the Scriptures, you will really start to enjoy life. Life is an exciting adventure. This time through this class for you will be one of the most wonderful times in your life. 
because we're going to be opening up the scriptures. We're going to make the scriptures known to you so that you can be tremendously blessed with all that God has made available for you. I'm excited about this time, and as you learn the keys and the road map and the outline of the Bible, you will have a map through the Bible that you will be able to sit in your private life and just read God's Word and have such tremendous fellowship with our Heavenly Father and tap the resources for the more abundant life. Right now, I'd like you to take your Bible and go to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John in chapter 5. Now the Gospels go Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're going to go to chapter 5 and verse 39. And you can also follow along with your syllabus. I'll have all these scriptures all laid out in order. And I'll also have uh, a little notes, some of my notes that I'm teaching by so this syllabus is a good thing that you could utilize to help you go through the class. And you can follow along with your syllabus. You can write whatever notes you'd like to write on the syllabus. It's just a tool to help you to get through the class and to see where we're going. It would be a great help and a benefit to you is if you start utilizing your Bible as you're going through the class. The syllabus will be in the show notes of each podcast session of the class. It has all the scripture references with some of my notes. And in verse 39 it says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Jesus Christ, talking to this group of people, says, Hey, search the scriptures. Look at the scriptures, the word of God, the Bible. We're to search the scriptures. And as we search the scriptures, you know, they're, they're going to tell us about eternal life. If you want to learn about eternal life, you're going to have to go to the scriptures because there isn't any that I know of to tell any other source to learn about eternal life but going to the scriptures. And Jesus Christ's exhortation was, search the scriptures. Well, this class on how to read the Bible is a class on how to search the scriptures. And like I've said, I'm going to show you a road map, uh, outline, a signpost on how to search the scriptures. Go to the Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. That's one book back. Luke 24. And we're going to start in verse 25. Now this is Jesus Christ. And he's walking with these two men on the road to Emmaus. And he says unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Jesus Christ, on the road to Emmaus, he sort of says, Why don't you guys know? And why are you so slow of heart to believe what all the prophets have said? He said, And then he starts, it says, Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself, himself being Jesus Christ. He was expounding unto them the scriptures, not some opinion, not some writings about the scriptures. He expounded the scriptures. And as they drew near unto the village, whither they went, he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening. And the day is far spent, and he went in and tarried with them. And it came to pass, as they sat at meat with them, he took the bread and blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us? while he talked with us by the way, while he opened 
to us the scriptures. He says, man, didn't our hearts burn within us? Weren't we excited? Wasn't that just wonderful as he opened unto us the scriptures? You know something? I've seen many boys and girls, men and women, adults, all kinds of people. And when that word of God is opened up to them and they start to see it and believe it, their hearts burn within them. The heart of a person just gets excited when they see how great God is. And look at what it says. Did not our hearts burn with us while he talked with us by the way? They were just walking down the road and he was sharing God's word with them. He was expounding them the verses, the scriptures that dealt with him, starting with Moses. Man, that must have been a great teaching. I wish we had a tape of that. huh? But it says while he opened to us the scriptures. That's what we need to do. We need to have the scriptures open to us. Not what people say about it, but let the scriptures speak for themselves. And as you learn how to read the Bible, you'll be sitting there in your, your chair reading God's word, and your heart will burn within you with excitement of God and his word. Let's go to verse 45. Then opened he their understanding. Jesus Christ, he opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Jesus Christ, when he got back with the twelve, he, he opened on the, the scriptures unto them. He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Well, that's my goal in this class, is that as we go through this class, you'll be able to understand the scriptures and as you continue later to be able to search and research God's word that you'll be able to understand the scriptures for yourself hey go to Acts chapter 8 we're in Luke you go Luke John Acts Acts chapter 8 Acts follows the gospel verse 29 then the spirit said unto Philip go near and join thyself unto this chariot and Philip ran hither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said understandest thou what thou readest <laughs> that's a question that I wish people asked me at times when I was reading God's word and I didn't understand it all I was having a hard time I wish someone said understandest thou what thou readest I'd say well I could use a little help but I'm glad someone came and started opening up the scriptures to me. And now I'm doing that for you. And he said, Understandest what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and began at that same scripture and preached Jesus unto him. He preached unto him Jesus. He opened the scripture and preached unto him Jesus. In this class, we are going to search the scriptures. It's the scriptures that make known God. Jesus Christ says, search the scriptures, because in them you think you have eternal life. If you want to know for sure, you better know the scriptures. It's the scriptures that make known God, make known his wonderful son, Jesus Christ. Philip, when he was teaching this eunuch, you know what he said? Well, this is what I think. No, he didn't. He said, right at that scripture, he expounded unto them about Jesus Christ. He preached Jesus Christ to him using the scriptures to do it. What a wonderful teacher that Philip must have been, huh? As he opened up the scriptures to him. I bet this eunuch's heart burned within him also. Go to Acts. We're in Acts. Go to Acts chapter 17. We're going to start in verse 2. We're going to read this verse. 
And this is talking about Paul. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Paul went into the synagogue, and he was there three Sabbath days, three weeks, right? And he reasoned with them with what? The Scriptures, out of the Scriptures, from the Scriptures. He just kept teaching the Scriptures, trying to open their hearts, open their understanding to what the Word of God says. In verse 3 says, Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and raised again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. He just opened up the Scriptures and said, This is the Christ. This is what the Scriptures are talking about right here. I'd like you to go down to verse 11 of... Uh, Acts chapter 17 and it says here these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so see Paul was in there teaching God's word speaking God's word and he was using the scriptures out of the scriptures from amongst the scriptures telling them about Jesus Christ how he must need suffer and then rise again and these believers in Berea when they heard that they went back to the scriptures they searched the scriptures daily whether the, those things were so or were those things true they went to the scriptures to prove the word they went back to the scriptures See, that's what we're going to do in this class. We're going to search the scriptures. We're going to, this class, in a lot of ways, I'm going to teach you how to search the scriptures. As you read the scriptures and let that word of God hit your mind so that you can understand it. You know, I see a, something here. I see that they, they search the scriptures daily. This might be a good thing for us to do, is to, Start a daily routine of searching the scriptures. I'd recommend, even as you're going through this class and you're learning new stuff and, and you're learning how the Word works and how the Bible works and how the road map through the class works, but that you also spend a little time just reading God's Word. Just reading the Bible. Searching the scriptures. Hey, check and see what if I'm saying is true or not. That's what they did in prayer. They searched the scriptures daily to see whether it was true or not. Well, that's what we can do today. We can search those wonderful word of God. That's what this class is really about, is to help you to be able to unlock this wonderful word of God. Go to Acts chapter uh, 18, just a chapter away, verse 18, and we'll go to verse 28. And this is talking about Apollos, who was a great orator, a great teacher. And it says, For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly shown by the what? The scriptures that Jesus was Christ. He used the scriptures, proved that Jesus Christ was the Christ. See, it's the scriptures that we have to get back to. It's the scriptures that tell us about eternal life. It tells us about all the promises in God's Word. It tells us how to live an abundant life that Jesus Christ came to make available. It's the scriptures that we need to search and read and to be able to understand. Man, I see this class as so vitally important for your lives because you'll be able to search the scriptures for yourselves to see if it's true. Hey, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're in Acts. The next book would be Romans, and then it would be Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, near the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to go to verse 3. And it says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the what? The Scriptures. See, Paul is saying, he's, I delivered unto you, right? I delivered this unto you, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. See, Paul didn't make it up. He saw it in, in God's Word, in the Bible. 
He saw that how the Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. The scriptures was his authority. The scriptures is our authority. We say according to the scriptures. According to that authority of the scriptures, you have the right to the things that are in God's word. And it says here that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That's pretty cool to think about, and we're going to get into that in, in greater detail in this class. Our sins are forgiven because of Jesus Christ, according, not to what I think, but according to the Scriptures. The Scriptures make known God's Word. The Scriptures make known who Jesus Christ is. The Scriptures make known eternal life. The Scriptures make known the power of God that we have available to us today so that we can see and have deliverance, which is pretty wonderful. Hey, let's go to 2 Timothy. We're in Corinthians, so you go through Corinthians, you go through 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, right? Then you go to Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, and then it's Timothy, that is 1 Timothy, now 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, and we're going to go to chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 16. Now it says, all scripture. <laughs> That's all of it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All the scripture, all this word of God from Genesis to Revelation, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Wow. This word of God is a profit for our lives. That's what this Bible is telling me right here. It's telling us. The scripture is profitable. See, you know, if you spend time searching the scriptures daily, it's profitable to you. See that? It's a profit to your life. It's profit for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. See, if this word of God is what it says it is and it's profitable, what you're holding in your hands, your Bible, is very profitable. And as you are able to understand this, this word of God, this Bible, there's a profit to your life, a, an immense profit to your life. It's profitable to you. That is great. And it's, that's why I'm so excited about it, is because I know as you are able to understand the Bible, you'll have what Jesus Christ was talking about. You'll have the more abundant life. You will have the, be able to understand the scriptures and know the power of God, which is pretty neat. I want to take just a, a, a few seconds here and just talk to you about the versions of the Bible. See, I am reading out of the King James Version. As you go through this class, you are welcome to use any version that you feel comfortable with. I use the King James Version because I'm comfortable with it. I've been reading it most of my life, and I'm comfortable with it. But if you are comfortable with any other version of the Bible, go right ahead and read that Bible. And you can follow along in the same scriptures, and they might have a little different wording, and it might even help you in your understanding. At times, as I go through this class, I will use other versions. But when I do, I'll always tell you, I'll say, we're going to use the Young's Literal. We're going to use the Revised. We're going to use the New Jerusalem Bible. Or whatever version that we're going to look at it, at that particular verse or that particular section, I will let you know about so that you'll know, oh yeah, that's not the King James. That's another version that he's reading from. But I believe all these versions are profitable and can help your understanding. In reading different versions, you can get a, a little more scope, maybe even help your understanding of the scriptures. And that's what I'll show as I get in. Sometimes I'll read two or three different versions of the same verse just to build our understanding of what that verse is saying. And I'll demonstrate that for you in this class. So feel free to use any version that you're comfortable with. And 
read as many versions as you as you would like. I think it's of a benefit to you to be able to do that. I believe that any translation or version can be helpful if you use the keys and principles on how to accurately interpret the Bible. I'll be teaching those keys and principles in this class. That's the finish of the opening of the class, part one. The next podcast will be the opening of the class, part two.